to episode five of Round Table Pod Racers. <laughs> I'm your host, Anna, from La Geeky Life. And I'm Julie from Infinity Jewels. Yay! Woo! <laughs> I feel like we need to get a better, uh, yay! Woo! I know. Response after we, we introduce Which is just half chopper. Beep boop. Yeah. That's a good idea. I like it. Okay. Guys, I'm sorry I have horrible allergies today, so I'm going to be a little stuffy. But it's okay, because I'm excited about our topic today. Me too. We did, <laughs> we did uh, extensive research. Yeah. An hour before. We can't believe my memory break. sucks and I had to rewatch everything. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So, Julie, what are you wearing today? So, I'm wearing a black t-shirt that has a uh, shaded out Millennium Falcon on it. And inside it says home. And it's really cute. I got it from the same website that I got the Tatooine shirt that I was wearing in episode 3. So I also still don't remember that website, but I will continue searching for it and eventually post it. I love it. It's Thank super you. cute. I love it too. And it's um, it's a woman's fit, so the sleeves are a little shorter, but I like it's a little bit like curvier. And I like the neck, it's a little lower than like yeah. the t-shirts. I like it a lot. You like mine that I can't wear like this? <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing? So today I'm wearing the Star Wars Rebels shirt from the Rebel box from Smuggler's Bounty, which I love. I mean, they only have one size fits all oh, really? men's shirts. Okay. So it's actually a small, but it fits pretty big. So Super cute. And they're all in the pop form. Yes, they're super cute. So for you guys that are not watching, they have... The Ghost Crew, Kanan, Ezra, Hera, Sabine, Chopper, and Zep, kind of like a blue shaded orange form, and they're all like pop editions. It looks like a Sabine's hairstyle in season one. Like yes. Like blue with the, the orange highlights. I thought it was fit for today. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I was like, I don't know what to wear today, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but... So let's see, what are some news for today, Miss Julie? Well, tonight, so we're recording Thursday right now, um, but tonight, Force Friday begins at midnight. So I'm we're so excited. Me too, oh my god. We're planning to maybe go to a local Toys R Us that's going to have like a midnight event. So if you're watching this not on Thursday, well then... Time travel. <laughs> uh, but for those of you who are wondering, um, Force Friday does last all weekend. <clears throat> so it is from Friday to Sunday, September 1st through the 3rd. So if you end up watching this at least some point in this weekend, hopefully you will be able to participate in it. Just go to like Target's. I think Walmart's are even doing it. Um, we might go to a Think Geek in Dolphin Mall tomorrow. Yes, we'll be there. Yes. I'm excited. I can't wait to get <clears throat> the Chewbacca pop with holding a fork. fork. So That's cute. one of my main goals for this weekend. I haven't even seen, other than a couple of the pops, like the Snoke and the Chewbacca, I haven't seen what they're going to be selling for Force Friday, and I'm very excited. So, there's actually, I just, I, I was going to show you, but we started recording. <laughs> um, so, I just noticed that um, there's a Walgreens toy that is... Ben Kenobi, kind of mm. like with the bluish kind of cape, kind of using like the force. I don't know. It was our first ghost. It was very hard to see. Mm. And then um, Funko has a Kylo Ren thermos pop edition. That is half of his max, mask and half him. <gasps> and there's a chewy pop Funko. And I saw that Box Lunch is already having specials on their mugs, which are they're beautiful. We'll pull it, we'll put a picture of it. Okay. For you guys that are not watching, the mugs came out first. I think in her universe, I saw them. The beautiful white, rounded, smaller, and one of them was um, Darth Vader, which is the one on my list. And mm -hmm. then the next one was an ATAT. -AT. So the it was like white, and the ATATs were blue. That's so cute. Yeah. And her universe is participating as well. Hopefully we'll get some really good sales so I can buy this dress I want. Yes. <laughs> and, well, guys, if you haven't done so, download the app. It's really, really cool. I forgot to put the video, but I will do it today. Um, we talk about Porks doing the Her Universe website, 
and there's yeah. characters coming out in every, if you go to a store and they have the ray poster it's like a barcode scanner but it doesn't look like a barcode it's like these weird splatter marks behind her and somehow the app picks up on it technology <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's pretty cool and i'm excited and we'll hopefully We'll find cool stuff. I'm excited for Legos because I think I saw a little port Lego. So I know our obsession with ports, we don't understand. But it's pretty cool. So I really can't wait. And I know Think Geek is having like a whole day event tomorrow yeah. with trivia, cosplay. I so, might try to cosplay there. But also, we're probably going to be trying to do a couple of uh, Facebook Live events while we're doing our things. So join us on that. Yes. It will be very entertaining and, I don't know, maybe maybe a Cuban coffee? Very hyper? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll be cool. And then next is Season 3 of Rebels DVD came out yesterday. And I can't wait to see all the bonus tracks and all the special features. They say that this DVD comes, like, packed with yeah. many extended versions and everything that I'm really, really excited because I can never get tired of listening to Filoni talk about the episodes, and I mean season I three. I just keep talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> and season three was packed with crazy things. Yeah, so I want to just watch season three again. Like, I would watch the deleted scenes, of course, and yeah. all the special stuff, but I almost just want to see Thrawn again, and Sabine on her journey, and all that awesome Maybe stuff. we can start watching. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so what else is next? In the so this weekend is also Dragon Con in Georgia. Very big convention here on the East Coast. Um, and for Dragon Con, they are releasing, I think we mentioned this two episodes ago, in episode three as well. They are releasing two books. Um, one of them will be Phasma, and the other one will be Princess Leia of Alderaan. So, Princess Leia of Alderaan, we were talking about, I think, in that episode three, about, like, what timeline is it going to be, because they already did bloodlines, and we found out, like, right after we recorded it, that it's actually going to be prior to A New Hope. It's going to be actually about her being the princess on Alderaan. Yes. And it is not by Claudia Gray. I know, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> no, I think I, I said Claudia Gray for Captain Fosmo. Oh, you're right, you're right. Okay. Yes, so, uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I was thinking Bloodline and everything got confused, but I was starting to look for the author, but my internet's acting up. But, uh, yeah. Phasma is written by Delilah, Delilah something. something. <laughs> Delilah Dawson. I'm oh, sorry, Delilah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's pretty, pretty, pretty quick. Let's see, and oh, uh, we're just looking up what's really quick. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't play it well today. Okay, so Princess Leia of Alderaan is Claudia Gray. Oh, so I so, so you, were, more. you were close. I was close. I was close, guys. Um, so yeah, so I can't wait to read those books. She writes an amazing Leia. I just finished Bloodline, and I'm almost there. Oh my god, it's so good. I actually, the book I'm reading right now is perfect. For today's topic. Yeah. Which, would you like to maybe introduce that? So yes, guys, our topic for today is Rebels. Drum rolls. So that's why we have lovely pops here. So for you guys that are watching, we have R2D2, Sabine, Hera, Chopper, which is I love this. It's so cool. Um, some troopers, Vader, and we have the ghost Lego mini version. With a little Hera piloting. Yes! So, yes, we wanted to get kind of ready for season four, and even though we don't have a special date yeah. for the release, we know it's coming soon, and it's going to be the last one, and I'm so sad. It's, it's, it's kind of scary a little bit, because, I don't know, that trailer... I'm not, I'm, no, I haven't watched the trailer. I know. So, <laughs> you um, sent it to me, but I knew you didn't watch it. I, was like, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch the first episode, even though I was there, but I couldn't, <laughs> but... It was all to me, Mark Hamill, and it was worth it. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we wanted to get ready, and we wanted to review kind of like the seasons, and season one is very introductory, so we'll do it all in one episode. Yeah, we will be covering seasons two and three, most likely in two episodes per season, yes. because we have a lot to There's say. There's too much. And these are going to be our shorter episodes, like about like the 30-minute long ones, most likely. Oh, yeah. Let's see how long this goes. <laughs> but... 
Yes. So this today is season one, and season one is 15 episodes. It's a lot <laughs> shorter than seasons two and three, which is also why we are only doing one episode. Yeah. And it was very, int- like, the introduction, which is pretty, pretty cool. Because yeah. we really, I mean, we get to see who the show's about. Exactly. In so, very detailed. Well, it's the 15 episodes and then the four shorts. And then the book I'm reading, which is canon, is A New Dawn. And it's actually about the story of how Kanan and Hera met. And I have, it had, it's in, broken up into three parts. Not three books, just three parts. And I'm on part two. Mm-hmm. So they, like, very recently met in the book. But it's really good. Is this one are you reading or audiobook? Audiobook. Oh, so I, what's your experience with audiobooks? I love Star Wars audiobooks. They are super interactive. It makes me feel like I'm watching an episode more than like reading a book because blaster sounds, ship sounds, different voices for different characters. If there's a droid, he has a metallic voice and a little... I'm making droid sounds. <laughs> um, it has the music, like my favorite soundtrack, Binary Sunset, whenever things get really intense and like beautiful and... Oh man. Listening to Bloodlines audiobook was amazing. It actually ended with Binary Sunset playing. And I was like, oh, tears. <laughs> I'm actually reading it, but I think I'm going to give audiobooks a, a try. I definitely recommend it for Ahsoka. I haven't done that one yet, but I want to just because of actually. Oh, yeah. I want to. <clears throat> well, I read the book, which is awesome. Um, I think we mentioned it before, but I now I want to do the audiobook, and it's with Ashley Axton's voice so I really want to so go and like it is Ahsoka it's Ahsoka like we're gonna have a whole book episode we we're planning it yeah stay tuned, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with the characters the characters are super important in Rebel in season one because I feel like that's what season one at least like the first like five or six episodes that's what the focus is it's like introducing these characters that are completely new and have nothing to do with the Skywalker family yes basically basically <laughs> Yeah, we get to see who they are, their relationship with each other, how they... Well, even though we don't know exactly how they came together, at least we see the main characters, how they found each other. Right. Like, we see Ezra, we have to we have to admit, Ezra is the main character yes. of this story. It, it is about his growth. So it's how he meets the band of heroes. Yeah. Which, I love how... The season, the episode one starts, it starts, like, setting the mood with, like, the beginning scene looking at the city of Lothal, like, right there, Ezra pondering, like, yeah, he doesn't know that his life is about to change, but he's seeing how this really gigantic empire ship is coming down to Lothal, and he knows that, oh, this is it, like, this is new. Yeah, like, I'm giving up because I don't see change, and... I feel like when I, I remember when I first saw episode one, I felt like Lothal was a mirror to Tatooine and A New Hope. Well, I actually, see that. I thought it was the same planet for a minute, <laughs> but then... It has a lot of similarities. Desert planet. Yeah. Uh, it really reminded me, and I wrote it down, it reminded me of the binary sunset. Like, yeah. that scene of, yeah. of Luke admitting, like... Things are going to change now. Like, this is different. This is new. And then everything did. Mm-hmm. And then same for Ezra. Yeah, because he's, a, he's still a child. I mean, he's there and he's feeling the force, but he's not sure what, what it, it even is. is. Yeah. Or, like, he thinks it's just, like, just a tingling feeling. Mm-hmm. But not, nothing more. So it's really cool. It's one of those developing characters that I really... But like, I had never thought about it until right now, but uh, I realized that Ezra is, like, Joseph Campbell's A Hero's Journey, mm-hmm. like, completely, like, it's his story of how he's developed, and just like Anakin, just like Luke, it's his story of his rise and fall. Yeah. And then rise again. Hopefully. We'll find <laughs> out next season. Let's see. <laughs> and then, one of my favorites, Hera. I love that in the beginning, we see her as the mom. Yes. As a general of the crew, and it's like, okay, I give you orders, and yeah, she, you see her piloting skills from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like, she knew how to, like, manage the goals, and she's insane, but in the book, like, literally right before I got here, I was listening to it, 
and like Kanan was hitting on her and she was like, no, I have my own shit. And he was super intrigued by that. <laughs> but I'm just like, oh, Kanan, you don't even know. <laughs> It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I want to read that. I want to listen to that one. It's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, how about Kanan? Kanan has a really cool chemistry with everybody, I feel. Like, more so, obviously, with Hera and Ezra. Like, Hera is mom, Kanan is dad, Ezra is son. But um, something that we didn't touch on with Hera is I love Hera's relationship with Sabine. Oh, yeah. It's like a weird mom and daughter, but also, like, older, younger sister. And For sure. It's something about it. Like, it's probably one of my favorite dynamics in the group itself. But I just, like, the whole thing with season one is just learning, like, who are they? Who are they? And seeing they're, that they're not family, but they're more family than their families. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, they, it's like every character literally has, like, Zeb is the uncle. Yeah. Sabine is the older sister. Like, it's Chopper's the dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Choppers are right. <laughs> yes. No, yeah, I totally see that. I see the dynamic of them as a group. I mean, it's more that them being rebels, they're, they're really a family. Mm-hmm. And how they're giving Ezra the chance to belong to something. To a family. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And Kanan, the introduction of him being a Jedi was amazing. That's one of my favorite yeah. parts of season one. Um... He has a different personality. It sometimes reminds me of Obi-Wan with the frustration levels that he gets. But then sometimes Anakin. But yeah, sometimes Anakin. And But, you know, when he tells the code, which I forgot the number now, to everybody like, okay, no, we're going to do code, blah, blah, blah. And then he becoming a Jedi. And then in that in tune that he has with the Force, mm-hmm. it's, I love that scene. It's pretty cool. I'm... Yes, I agree completely. I'm excited to see in the book how it develops because right now he's totally shunned the idea of being a Jedi. I'm kind of excited to see where the cross happens, but he reminds me a lot of, for all of you guys who've played, oh my god, Jedi Knight Academy or <laughs> any of I mean, Jedi Knight games. He reminds me so much of the character from that whose name is I'm blanking right now. Hi, what was his name? Kyle Katarn. Yes! He reminds me so, so, so much of Kyle Katarn in his, like, sarcastic, witty humor and is kind of, like, a jerk, but not really. And I love him. Yeah. I love Kanan. Kanan. And that's another character that you see mature in this yeah. um, season and in the whole series because at the beginning there's a couple episodes and I think it's when we see Luminera. That he gets frustrated at Ezra, and he's like, oh, this kid's not taking this seriously. Mm-hmm. And this, again, means a lot to me. So I'm just going to, no, you know what? You're not my paddle anymore. Here, go with Luminara. Like, I'll take you. Mm-hmm. I like that, and I like that he's not only frustrated at Ezra for not being serious enough about it, but he's frustrated at himself for not being a good enough teacher. Yeah. Because he never finished becoming a knight. He is still a paddle on technically. Mm-hmm. I also like that his Jedi Master whose name is also blanking in my head, but I have the perfect image of her in my head, wasn't somebody super relevant in prequels or in Clone Wars. That she's somebody that we know, but not somebody that we really know. Exactly. Which, it's pretty cool, because it doesn't have to be someone that will remember in the Clone Wars and that people are going to criticize. So it's like, it's no, like, we have to remember, there was a lot more Jedis than those ten that we know by name and by heart, so... Exactly. It's pretty cool, and yeah, how he takes over as restraining after he gets, after he gets over being frustrated, it's pretty cool, because he's finally like, okay, back to, like, really believing in Ezra and believing in himself, Yeah, which is pretty cool. And that ties back into Kanan being Ezra's dad. Yeah. And, figure. and then we see it in season three. Hmm. But, okay. <laughs> season okay. one. Um, Mr. Seb. Oh, I love Zeb. Okay. Zeb, like, when I first started the show, and even before I started the show, I thought Zeb was meant to be, like, the comic relief character. And then I watched it. And I was like, oh. Zeb is more than that. He's, he's, he's like, one of the characters who probably has one of the darkest histories. Yeah. 
I mean, the first two episodes, I think we see Zeb as being uh, the strong guy, yeah. and muscles, and... Or talking Chewbacca, basically. Yeah. But then I think it's episode three, or the second episode, where they're um, robbing uh, the pistols, the, the armory. Yeah. And those are the weapons that they use to destroy his family. Mm-hmm. And he went, like, in shock. He, like, jumped back, like, I'm not touching this. Yeah. I felt like that was, like, who are you? Like, you became so emotional after a yeah, while. Yeah, I was like, okay, what do those mean to you? Yeah. Why are they, like, what's happening right now? Yeah, and it's cute to see his relationship with Ezra because their relationship is like big brother and the annoying little brother. Yeah. Like, they're in the bunk beds and they're like, ah, oh, get out of here. No, but I saved your life and I'm going to remind you 20 times <laughs> a day. So it's pretty cool. Or, like, it also kind of reminds me of, like, Simba and Scar before oh, yes. Scar went totally <laughs> pretty evil. Yeah. Like, when Simba's, like, jumping on him and Scar's, like, uh, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, I see that. Now I wonder your favorites. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Sabine. So, her the, this season, her hair was my least favorite hair. I think that's, like, one of the most important things I have to talk about when talking about Sabine. That, I mean, we can tell. Yeah, for you guys not obviously, watching. Obviously, I love Sabine, too. <laughs> her, Julie's hair is black with a blue highlight. Blue greenish highlight. Yeah, I'm Sabine season, too. And yeah. In fact, I might actually cosplay that for the Think Geek event tomorrow. Ooh, we'll post pictures. Yay! Yay. So, I, as I mentioned earlier, Sabine and Hera is one of my favorite duos. Um, I guess I'll talk about it more when we get into two and three, but I love, I love where Sabine and Kanan go, how they become yes. um, father daughtery later on, but we don't really see too much of that in season one. I think um, season one, her and Ezra are also really weird, but also really interesting. Ezra has, like, this weird crush, crush. on her, <laughs> yeah. but it's, like, very, like, obvious, and Sabine's kind of just like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> Little kid, get out of here. But the more the season, like, the show continues, and the older he gets, the more I'm like, oh, yeah, you're not that different in age. But at the same time, now it's become more like brother-sister, which I'm also totally cool with. No, and I love that. I ship it. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> no, I don't. I feel like it's family. Mm-hmm. It's not Targaryens. <laughs> but... <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> um, no, I love that this season shows us the capabilities that each character has. And mm-hmm. we see since the beginning that Sabine is a true Mandalorian. Yeah. She's good at her explosives. She's good at flying. She's good at, you know, fighting. And she has that core. She's a total badass. Yes, yeah, she has that courage to be like, oh no, I'm here. And... You know, I talk about my family. We don't really know what happened to their to her family in season one. We have a lot of episodes where she's talking like deeply with Hera and be like, "No, but I used to trust them, the Empire, and look what they did to my family. Why would I trust you if you're not telling me what happened?" Yeah, and that's when the whole fulcrum goes around. But we'll keep in our order. But <laughs> I really like that you see a lot of Sabines. Fighting and explosives and armory techniques in season one because then we see how it keeps like growing. growing. You know what's really cool about Sabine too? All the little girls that cosplay her. Oh, it's so cute. Like I, when we went to Star Wars Celebration, I saw so many little girls like in actual armor, like better than my Sabine costume, <laughs> and the helmet and everything. In I thought that was like so cool because like yeah, she's a little girl role model now. Yeah, I know. I love that Star Wars is one of those shows that really gives us strong female characters. And lately, there's been more, but there's been a lot since the beginning. I mean, Princess Leia, come on, guys. Yeah. I hate the people that are hating on Forces of Destiny. But whatever. Um, but no, yeah, Sabine is such a great female char- character. I love that we have a female Mandalorian character. Yeah. For me, that's like, that's so cool. I know, like, we got a little bit of that in Clone Wars, but she was a bad guy. Yeah. For the majority of it. So, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I like it a lot. I love her, obviously. <laughs> and next up is our favorite droid. One of our favorite droids. Cause it's, I, like, cute Chopper sounds. I, well, we'll get that good eventually. <laughs> um, Chopper is amazing. He's one of my favorite droids. His personality is hilarious. He brings a humor, sarcastic 
tones of the show, even though he can't talk. I feel like Chopper's <laughs> literally cursing at everybody at every moment. That oh, he yeah. Is beeping. There's been hilarious YouTube videos of, like, oh, this is what Chopper re- really says. Maybe, maybe his, his sounds are bleep loops, more so to, like, bleep out what he's actually saying. He's probably just cursing all the time. Yeah, for sure. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, we have to remember this is a kid's show. Mm-hmm. So it's, again, it's a little bit lighter than seasons two and three. And then Clone Wars. Yeah. Clone Wars was also a kid's show, but I feel like Clone Wars threw in a lot of R2 and C3PO for the kiddies. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, Dave Filoni has done a great job with Rebels, and I really, really love it. Yeah, same. It's really good. Um, we also noticed that there's a lot of connections to, the, like, Clone Wars, the original trilogy, and the prequels with, like, different characters that they use, like, Lando, they brought back Yoda as, like, a Force mentor thing. Um, we do know that it's five years before A New Hope, yeah. so this is also going to lead into Rogue One. Yes. Eventually. Terrifying. And there has been time skips, I think, with, like, all of the Sabine hairstyles and Ezra cutting his hair and all that stuff. Like, I'm pretty sure this last season is going to be right before. But hopefully not. Yeah, <laughs> because we get a lot of Easter eggs in, in mm-hmm. Rogue One about Rebels. So it's it's going to be interesting. Yeah. But, no, yeah, we also see... Tarkin Luminara. and Luminara, which was very sad. That episode was intense. Just like, that scene. That scene where she goes back to, like, being dead, or I don't know exactly yeah, what it was. Decomposing. It's, and she doesn't have her headpiece, so at first it's like, what happened? It's yeah, so sad. Like a, um, it looks like a know. bald cap or some kind of, I don't know. It's, it's different. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very sad. And uh, we also have Yoda, or his voice on the Force, with those temple yeah. um, scenes, which are one of my favorites. And I feel like those scenes were very important for Ezra and Kanan in order for them to, like, okay, you guys are in this together, and you guys are two of the maybe few, or only two, because they're probably think they're the only two surviving Jedis. Yeah. So... And then there's also the stormtroopers. In it, we get to see how stormtroopers differ from clone troopers because we're so used to the clones and actually liking them that we get to see that the stormtroopers aren't clones. They are trained kids to be troopers. And like we actually see that they are assholes a little bit. Pardon <laughs> my French. But yeah, like we all think they're super funny. Because they hit their heads on doors, and they miss when they're shooting. And Robot Chicken has made them hilarious and perfect in every <laughs> way. Yes. But we see that they're total jerks in this. Yeah, those training camps are intense. And um, you see, like, they brainwash them. Because when Ezra's talking to the other two boys, mm-hmm. it was like, one of them was like, oh, what are you doing? Like, no, we're with the Empire, and they have that proudness that, yeah. you know, we fight and die for the Empire. But then the other one was like, oh, I'm confused. I'm going to help you. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. It's and like all that, plus the whole thing of, like, they have to be the best. So they don't mind defeating their higher-ups as long as they're doing it in the name of the Empire. Yeah, and they brought those tests back from the Clone Wars because we did see them mm-hmm. in the Clone Wars, and I thought they were super cool. When they're, like, jumping in those blocks. Yeah, the Obi-Wan yeah. episode. So cool. So it's really, really cool. And then we have one of my favorite parts. Fulcrum is announced. So at first we don't see exactly who it is. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. That's where Sabine was like, why are we going to follow this Fulcrum? Mm-hmm. And we see Bell Organa. And, you know, that's when you're thinking, okay, he's he's been there since the beginning of the Rebellion. Yeah, and it's been pretty awesome because we know that, you know, a lot of people suffer. He saw Padme passing away after, and he still has that, like, you know, I can do this. I can help. Um, yeah, I'm going to make it happen. So um, they have this secret agent, which has a lot of information, goes undercover with a lot of things and a lot of missions. 
And, and it's only it. Hera and Kanan? No, 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 Kanan doesn't even no, know. So only Hera, Hera knows. knows. Because I feel um, in, the, in season one, she's the one that is the general and the direct contact with, with the, the Rebel, Rebel Alliance. Yeah. Um, which, they're not really the Rebel Alliance in season one, but they're starting to form. And they're like, Getting together, there's they notice that oh look, there's people around that really want to join us. They're a sector. Yeah, we find out exactly. So and then we find out that Fulcrum is my favorite Ahsoka. Oh, I'm like we we don't have to talk today. Yeah, uh, for season two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's amazing to see her again. I was so excited when I saw oh, that scene going down the stairs. I could recognize her voice and I started screaming like a little girl. Um, her older look is pretty cool. Hell um, yeah. So, it's awesome. I love that she's Fulcrum. Plus, when you read the book, and spoilers, that's around the ending, they mm-hmm. mentioned that. So, I'm not going to go into details, but... <laughs> so, you're like, yes, this is how it started, and... I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> but, <laughs> there, it's pretty cool. So, yeah. I love Fulcrum, and I love... I guess we'll probably end up talking about more more of Fulcrum in our season two and three discussions because it becomes slightly more relevant. It's already relevant in season one, but Ahsoka becomes more relevant, and then the role of Fulcrum becomes even more relevant in season three again. So it's a whole it's a whole weird mess. But we will definitely be touching on this. Okay. <laughs> yes, and then. We ha- we kind of mentioned um, that in this we really get to see that the Empire is the bad guy. Yeah, like there's no doubt. Yeah, we we know you know they're always the antagonist. They're blew up Alderaan, but in this we get to see that people who like support the Empire are also <sighs> like really mean. <laughs> yeah, they're all mean. Like <laughs> like I don't know how to explain it too well, but, like, I don't know, they seem just, like, they're all, like, very proud. Kind of what we were saying about the Stormtroopers. Like, that mentality is how all of the Imperial people are. Yeah, they're definitely brainwashed, and I'm not going to even bother politics or politics yeah. right now, <laughs> but it's crazy to see that, you know, people will get brainwashed and will do those mean things, and they don't care about others. So mm-hmm. we see that in the in the Empire in this season that they really brainwash other people. They have Agent Callis. He doesn't care. He's doing it and he's afraid of his superiors so he mm-hmm. has to like catch the rebels. And we yeah. have Tarkin coming up and we will always see Tarkin has been mean since the beginning but <laughs> we were like, okay, yeah, this is the the Empire moment where Callis was in place, where Tarkin was in place and we get to see like all these characters and only a few of them become sympathizers. Only, like, a handful. And yes. I think that alone is, like, yeah. crazy. Crazy. Um, and then we have... What <laughs> the lightsabers? Eight, uh, lightsabers? The lightsabers. Oh, they're pretty cool. I feel like they're more, like... I forgot the name now. For fencing? Great ears. Yes. Yeah, they they look skinnier and like with a point. And the way, like at least for that, um, one of the Inquisitor fights against Kanan, that wasn't real. Um, <laughs> he looks like he's wielding it like a rapier, like a lot more fencing involved than um, we are used to, for example, in like the fights that we choreographed. The, yeah, the sabers, like the light in them, are a lot thinner, mm-hmm. kind of toothpicky looking. Yeah. But also the design of almost every single character's lightsaber is super weird. Yeah, Esther's lightsaber is like a combination of a lightsaber and a blaster. Yeah. and Which like, is really cool, but also really strange. Like, yeah, but I love, I love, like, whoever came up with this, like, yes, we needed more of those before. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Even Kanan's, even though it's, like, a real lightsaber mm-hmm. or, like, an original one, it looks a little different. It yeah. looks more the rusty side, like, you know... The mm-hmm. rebel side. And um, can we talk about the Inquisitors? That freaking weird spinning disc saber staff. I feel like thing. it's a frisbee. Yeah. Like it's gonna close it up. <laughs> and later on, we see them use them as helicopters. Mm, yeah. Um, you know, they're really cool, but all 
also, they weren't um, my favorite. Yeah, no. They're not, they're really spooky, but at the same time, not. I don't know. I don't know, I did not like, I mean, I like it, it's a cool concept, it's different, but it wasn't my favorite. But at the same time, we've always seen that the Sith have different lightsabers, so sure. I see how, you know, Cal Dooku has the bent one, um, which just has the two two-curved. Um, yeah, and then Maul with the staff, so I feel like, yeah, there's... Because they only get red, so they're kind of... Like, like diversified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the whole look of the Inquisitor, I liked. I he's liked look, his look. He reminds me of the, the sun. Oh, yes. A lot. Um, it was. Snoop. Ooh, you know, I thought about that. <laughs> but then the season came out. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it, it's different, but I like his look and um, his look. His I was going to let it slide during the years. Sorry, my husband would be making fun of me already. Uh, my super English guys, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, his look, look. No, I can't say it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And it's mean, but his fighting style is also great. We mentioned the choreography in the Rebels is pretty intense. Yeah, it's really good. Quick. Super quick. And I yeah. love it. Um, we also see a cross guard saber for the first time. It doesn't look good in any other color but red. I've decided. It could only work in red. We see it in green, for those of you who don't yeah. know. Yeah. And um, Ezra just picks it up, and he's like, this thing is weird, and then he tosses it away. And that's literally it. I love that. I love that here. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I love that if, it, if this came out before The Force Awakens. I don't remember yes. it. Yes. Yeah, right? Yes. So, I think, like, we already saw Kylo's saber, probably, and they're like, here's a little a little Easter egg. A little, here you go. No, oh, I have to double check, but I think this came out before the Force Awakens. Okay. But um, it's, like, cool, because, um, it's not an unstable blade, it's green, it's totally different, and I don't like it as much. And I'm totally biased. I mean, I have to like cross guards, but... I don't know, it looks pretty cool in white when Jared take his, takes it to class. I agree. Like, he's your only competition when it comes to cross guards. <laughs> well, he's actually lent me his cross guard, and it's super light in comparison to mine. And I like it a lot. Jared, your, your, your saber's awesome. Super cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have my favorite. My awesome... <laughs> Vader comes out and I love the intro he has and you know like oh you guys are not doing anything right so here we're gonna the Emperor send you mm-hmm. his They're best like, guy <laughs> you know like just about to get and, real. Yeah, the intro his and <laughs> then his costume like his look is like the, I love it it's like the original style draw, like design for him very anime looking very Korean so I love it. I, I mean, love it too. I love it. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And, and it's a good intro for season two. It's a good, yeah, it's a good, like, end point and, like, not cliffhanger, but at the same time, we are left with a little cliffhanger because we are, like, Vader's now here. And Ahsoka's now here. And Ahsoka's now here. And What's like, going on? Oh my god. <laughs> Do they know yet? Like, oh, are they going to meet each other? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your favorite? scene here in season one my favorite scene is probably like a joke of a scene but it's my favorite it's um there's an episode where they meet another droid who is in the empire (laughs) and (laughs) the droid is actually like kind of a good guy so they take him on to the ghost and chopper gets really jealous for the entire episode and at the end um he's like standing on the what is it called? Like the I said the ramp, the the, uh, the part of the ship that opens up. Yeah, <laughs> that. And Chopper just presses the button <laughs> while they're flying in space, <laughs> and he gets blown out. This other droid. And I'm the only droid here. Yeah, he's, he's like he's claiming his territory, and I think like. Ezra and Zeb just stare at Chopper like he just basically killed this <laughs> droid. We later see that the, the droid dead. survived with Loth cats. Yeah, but like Chopper is a jerk. <laughs> I love I him. know Chopper. For me, I would have to say 
the intro to the Jedi was my favorite. Okay. One of my favorites because I love I love seeing their own dynamic in this season. But um, yeah, that intro where oh he's a Jedi and everybody's surprised. No. I love that. And then obviously Ahsoka coming down the stairs because oh, yeah, I was right. like oh yeah. I think I was even super hyped for that one. Yeah. So um, and you know the way like she comes and she's still like okay a general and she's still doing good which for me meant a lot so mm-hmm. it was pretty cool I love that she part she was still humble she was still so good yeah fighting for what she's passionate about which I loved her I character love is amazing I miss her I miss her so much let's see about season 4 <laughs> yes um, but yes so I think that's about it for today yeah, so if you guys tell us, send us messages with your favorites from season one, and maybe even tell us your favorites from season two, and we can talk about it next episode. And send us questions if you guys want us to answer or discuss any topics from season two, and we would love to do that. We'll do it for maybe next week. Oh, yeah. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Most likely, though. <laughs> um, and remember to check out our Facebook live events and our Facebook and our Twitter and our individual Instagram, <laughs> which will all be linked below. Yes. And good luck this weekend. And may the first be with you with Forest Friday. <laughs>